everyone! Today, please join me in crocheting this adorable little dinosaur. This is the Tiny Rex, um, T-Rex for short. But as you can see, um, he's such a cute, chibi version of the Tyrannosaurus Rex. And you can go ahead and make him using just a little bit of yarn. He doesn't take up very much. And he works up so quickly. And the best thing is, it's a no-sew project. <laughs> So you can crochet this whole thing without even having to touch a yarn needle. This little guy is um, great using velvet yarn. I'll show you my materials in a bit, but if you want, you can even use medium weight um, or acrylic yarn to crochet a tiny version of him as well. Perfect as a keychain size. All right, let's take a look at the materials and then we're gonna go through the step-by-step -step tutorial. I also wanted to quickly mention that Tiny Rex's written pattern is available as a printable ad-free PDF file. It's 9 pages with 56 photo references to guide you through the process. I recommend it for beginners. I think it's very helpful to have as you crochet along with my video tutorial here. It's inexpensive, easy to read, and it really supports me as a pattern designer because it helps me offset materials costs and helps me keep up with my blog and continue to put out more free patterns just like this one. So thank you so much in advance for listening, and I hope you'll love making Tiny Rex. All you'll need is some super bulky weight yarn. I'm using this velvety yarn here called Baby Snuggle by Hobby. And you'll also use a five millimeter crochet hook for this project. You'll need some plastic safety eyes. I have these really cute um, kawaii eyes here. As you can see, they have sparkles in them. I have this linked in the description box below if you'd like to get these special types of eyes too. And um, you'll also need a pair of scissors. Oops, <laughs> sorry for the fluff there. And last but not least, some stuffing. So you'll need just a bit of stuffing for your dinosaur too. All right, let's get started. To begin, we're going to chain six. So that's going to be one, two, three, four, five, and six. Then you're going to single crochet in the second chain from the hook right here. As you can see, this is the first chain from the hook. Here's the second one. So I'm gonna insert my hook in right there. Make a single crochet. Then you're going to single crochet in the next three stitches. So that's one, two, and going into the next one, three. And then what you're gonna do is insert your hook into the last chain, and you're going to insert three single crochets in the last chain. So that's going to be one single crochet, two single crochets, and three single crochets all in the same chain. When you do that, you're going to find yourself going around and working on the other side of the chain now. So we're gonna go ahead and insert three, excuse me, a single crochet in each of the next three chains. So here we go with one single crochet, two, and three. And in the very last chain, what you're gonna do is insert two single crochets as an increase. And that finishes up the first round. For round number two, you can start off with a stitch marker to find your place. I'm using a yarn um, strand as a stitch marker here. It's a very makeshift one, but it'll allow me to see where the start of the round is. So let's go ahead and work. In the very first single crochet, you're going to increase, meaning put two single crochets in the same stitch. Then you're going to single crochet three. That's one, two, and three. 
Then you're going to um, go into the next three single crochets by increasing. So in the next one, we're going to increase. We're increasing three here. So that's the first increase. Here is the second increase. And now onto our third increase. And then you're going to single crochet three. One, two, three. And you're going to increase in the last two stitches. So increase. And in the next one, increase. There we go. So that finishes up round number two. Now for round number three, we're simply going to single crochet around going into each of the stitches here. You're going to have a total of 18 stitches in your round count. So let's go and insert your hook into the first single crochet, single crochet in each of these, going around the entire round. After you've gone around the entire round, um, that finishes up round number three. For round number four, we're going to start doing some decreases. What you're going to do is single crochet six first, and then you're going to decrease three and single crochet six. So let's get started. Single crochet six, that's one, two, three, four, five, and six and then we're going to decrease in the next um well decrease three times so you can do an invisible decrease if you want or a regular decrease i like to do the invisible decrease and let me slow down and show you what that looks like you're going to insert your hook into the front loop of the first stitch then you're going to insert your hook into the front loop of the next stitch so that's going to be for the um, two stitches there. Yarn over, pull through both loops, then yarn over and make your single crochet like normal. Let's do that again because we're going to need to decrease three times. So insert your hook into the front loop of the next stitch, insert your hook into the front loop of the next stitch, yarn over, pull through both loops, then yarn over and single crochet like normal. And let's do it one last time for our third decrease here. Insert your hook into the front loop. Insert your hook into the front loop. Yarn over, pull through both loops, and yarn over and single crochet. Then we're going to single crochet six to finish this round. One, two, three, four, five, and six. There we go. And I'm just going to start putting my um, amigurumi right side out for now so it doesn't get stuck later. You can go ahead and do that as well. And that concludes round number four. As you can see, we have this little um, decrease going on here. For round number five, we're going to start off with four single crochets. So that's going to look like this. One, two, three, and four. Then you're going to decrease three times. So let's go into this, these next two stitches. Decrease. And then decrease in the next... Decrease the next two stitches together. And then decrease the next two stitches together. That makes a total of three decreases. Then you're going to single crochet five. So that's one, two, three, four, and five. 
And after that, um, you'll have finished round number five. It's now a good time to attach the plastic safety eyes. All right, so um, you're gonna go ahead and attach the eyes at this point. As you can see, I've put them in already and you'll put them in between rounds two to three. So here's round one, two, and three. And you can see that they're right in between two and three here. And I like to put mine about eight to nine stitches apart. I think this one's currently nine stitches apart. And just make sure the eyes are balanced on both sides of the head. So after you put in the eyes, you can go ahead and continue on with the rest of the directions um, here. So let's go to round number six. For round number six, what you'll do is just single crochet around first, one in each stitch. So you're gonna end up with 12 single crochets in this round. That's one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and then that finishes up round number six here. By the way, if you want to get these cute little eyes, um, be sure to check out the description box below. I have the eyes linked there. They're my favorite eyes to use for very cute kawaii makes, so um, they come in a lot of different sizes too. For reference, um, they come with, in a cute little box, um, an organizer, and you'll get them from, I think this is eight millimeters, I'll have to double check. It'll be in the description box. Um, all the way up to these really huge eyes here. All right. For round number seven, we're going to go ahead and single crochet three and increase all the way around. Here's what it'll look like. Single crochet three. One, two, three. And in the next stitch, you're going to increase by putting two single crochets in the same stitch. Let's repeat that two more times. So single crochet three, one, two, and three, and increase in the next stitch. Once more, single crochet three, one, two, three, and increase in the next stitch. All right, there we go with the round number seven. I'm gonna take out my stitch marker now. As you work along, it'll be a good idea to start stuffing the head and stuffing the body um, before you get too far along. So I'm gonna take some time now to go stuff the top of the head. Let's now work on round number eight. You're going to single crochet four and increase all the way around. So, um, Excuse me, let me grab my stitch marker back here. Let's just mark the front of the round. All right, so single crochet four. One, two, three, four. And then we're going to increase in the next stitch. Insert two single crochets in the same stitch. Repeat this, so single crochet four. One, two, three, four, and then increase in the next stitch. We'll do this one more round, one more repetition, excuse me. One, two, three, and four single crochets. And you're going to increase in the very last stitch. All right, then um, let's go ahead and start on round nine. For round nine, you're going to single crochet two and then increase all the way around. This is what it's going to look like. Single crochet two, one, two, and increase. 
single crochet two, one, two, and increase in the next stitch. Single crochet two, one, two, and increase. Single crochet two, one, two, and increase. Single crochet two, increase, and last repetition here, single crochet two, and increase. All right, after you do round number nine, we're gonna start on round 10, and round 10 is very easy. You're just going to single crochet around, putting one single crochet in each stitch. So here I'm going to make a straight round, one single crochet in each stitch, no increasing, no decreasing, nothing special here. You'll have a total stitch count of 24 when you are done with round uh, number 10. And here's a look at your dinosaur so far. You're gonna see that um, your dinosaur has a nice rounded little head here, and we're starting to form the belly portion. In the next round for round 11, we're gonna begin working on the tail, um, and we're going to add that protruding out without any sewing needed. All right. For the tail part, it may be a little bit tricky because we're going to have to look at where our dinosaur uh, points as opposed to just counting the number of stitches. So you're gonna see where the center of your dinosaur's back is. Um, make sure the nose is pointed towards you. And here's the back of the head. I'm gonna look down. And as you can see, I'm a little off center right now. My starting yarn tail or my yarn tail here, is not at the middle of the dinosaur's back. And I want to start at the middle of the dinosaur's back when I crochet the tail. That's This will allow your tail to be aligned instead of like, you know, <laughs> being lopsided. So I'm going to take out some stitches until I get to the middle of the back. If you are right at the middle of the back, you don't need to do anything, but if you haven't, let's say you're on the side and you are not at the middle of the back, just add some single crochets until you do get there, all right? It'll depend a little bit um, on eye placement and um, also your tension. So not everyone's gonna end up in the same place by now, but we wanna make the tail as straight as possible and as aligned as possible with the dinosaur. So I'm going to need to take out probably two or more stitches, I'm guessing here. I took out two, and I think this is kind of, yep. All right, so I took out two stitches, and now I'm seeing that it is, I am at the middle of the dinosaur's back. So this is where I'm going to start my dinosaur's tail. So to do the tail, you're going to do a, um, make a chain first. We're going to chain five. And that looks like this, one, two, three, four, and five. So that's going to be the start of our tail. And this is gonna be part of round 11 now. We're going to do round 11 going around this tail area to the end. So right now we're going to insert a single crochet in the second chain from the hook. All right, so going into the second chain, Right here, I'm going to insert a single crochet. Then we're gonna single crochet three along the tail. So that's one, two, and three. And this brings me to the end of the, or back to the tail where we're close to the body. Now what we're gonna do is work in the regular round 
And we're gonna start with a decreased stitch that combines the starting stitch when we started the chain five and the next stitch in the round. So here's what it's going to look like. I'm gonna insert my hook into the starting stitch where I made my chain, yarn over, pull out a loop, go into the next stitch in the round, yarn over, pull out a loop, and make a decrease like normal. Then I'm gonna start working in the round like normal. So in the round, I'm going to single crochet seven first. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Then I'm going to decrease four up ahead. You can go ahead and use an invisible decrease if you want, or you can use a regular decrease. I like to do invisible decreases for the body part, um, just so it's a little less noticeable. So that's one decrease. Here's, oops, two decreases. Right, excuse me, my camera ran out of space there, so I had to um, pause and redo this clip here. But we're, we were on our way with decreasing, so we did the first two decreases of this round. We have two more decreases to go. So in these next stitches, I'm going to pull through and decrease, and then got one more over here. Going into these front loops for an invisible decrease. After you do the decreases, you're going to go ahead and single crochet once more. We're going to single crochet eight in this round to finish. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. You'll notice that the start of our round is now going to be at the very side of the tail. And we're going to work this um, tail part into the next round as well. This concludes round number 11, and we're going to jump to round number 12. For round number 12, we're going to start off going into the tail here. We're going to do two single crochets along the tail. So that's going to look like this. Oops. Sorry, a little fiddly here. One single crochet, two single crochets, and then we're going to decrease twice. So I'm going into both these loops here for a decrease, and then now I'm on the other side of the tail going into two stitches to decrease, and then I'm going to single crochet two. One and two. As you do that, you notice the tail might be curved upwards a little bit. You're going to want to still pinch it and flip it so that the right side is out. You'll have this little knob that forms and it'll become a more um, clear shape of a tail later. So after you worked on the single crochets for the tail end, we're going to work into the regular round now. We're going to start by single crocheting six, decreasing four, and then single crocheting six. So insert your hook into the first stitch for a single crochet. That's one, then two, then three, four, five, and six. Then we're going to start decreasing. I'm doing invisible decreases, um, as mentioned earlier, for the body. You're welcome to do regular decreases if you want. So here's the second decrease. Here's going to be the third decrease. And here is going to be the fourth decrease. And now I'm going to single crochet six more to finish the round. That's one, here's two, three, four, five, and six brings me to the side of the tail. 
All right, you'll see that your dinosaur is starting to take form now with the little knobby tail and the protruding tummy here. Let's continue on with round number 13. For round 13, we're gonna decrease three going into the tail. So here, I'm going in and decreasing one, then decreasing two, then decreasing three in the next two stitches here. I'm just doing regular decreases for the tail because um, the invisible decreases may be a little hard to work in over there. So that's why. <laughs> now I'm going to work back on the regular round. For the regular round, you're just going to single crochet twice and decrease four times around. So let's do that repetition here. Single crochet two, one, two, and decrease. Repeat that again, single crochet two, and decrease. Repeat that again, single crochet two, and decrease. And repeat that, single crochet two, and decrease in the last two stitches. There we go. That is round number 13. All right. And for round 14, um, what you're gonna do is, starting from the tail, you're going to decrease seven all the way around. Um, before you do that, it might be a good idea to start stuffing the body so that your hole doesn't end up getting so small and tight that you can't stuff anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and just add some stuffing in here. And then we're going to move in to round number 14. For round 14, we're simply going to decrease 7 all the way around. You're going to start from the tail and work into the regular round. So I'm just gonna insert my hook into the next two stitches here and make a decrease. I'm just using regular decreases because invisible decreases are pretty tricky to do when, um, especially when you're at the tail end. So that was two decreases. Here is number three and then number four. Then number five, number six, number seven. And we're not quite at the very end of the round, but that's okay. It's because we don't have the um, an even number of stitches to kind of get there. But the very bottom is just a matter of stitching the hole closed. So don't worry too much about stitch count here. You'll want to finish stuffing your dinosaur at this point before you close up the hole completely. All right, and now we're going to finish up with round 15. Round 15 is simply going to be skipping a stitch and slip stitching in the next stitch. You're gonna do this around four times. This will allow your hole to get cinched up. So I'm going to skip the next stitch, go into the following, and make a slip stitch here. Skip a stitch, go into the next one, slip stitch. Skip a stitch, go into the next one, slip stitch. And skip a stitch, go into the next one, and slip stitch. As you can see, this really closes up the little hole on the bottom. And at the end, you're going to want to fasten off and just use the last bit of the yarn tail to sew up whatever tiny hole you have left. So here I've got this tiny little hole. I'm just going to weave my yarn tail in 
and get that hole cinched up. All right, there we go. Just weaving in the ends here. Yay! After you finish round number six, 15, excuse me, you'll have this cute little dino shape without any arms or legs, but it's still cute nonetheless. Aren't you really proud of the little tail you've made? And um, you can go ahead and now follow directions on how to make the knobby little arms, legs, and if you want, the cool um, little spikes in the back of the dinosaur. After finishing the body, you're gonna go ahead and crochet the little arms and legs and we're going to use puff stitches for them. We're gonna use small puff stitches for the arms and large or big puff stitches for the legs. Let's start with the arms. For the arms, you're gonna count down to round seven. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Find a spot that you want the arms to be and you're going to basically insert your hook under a stitch where um, you want the arms to be. So as an example, I did the other side here. So you can see that it falls um, close to um, the area underneath the eye. And I wanna balance it out over here as well. Let me see. Um, I could do this. It seems a little far back. Maybe I'll go here. All right, that seems a little closer to um, being balanced. All right, so for the small puff stitch, you're going to go ahead and pull through your yarn first, like so. We're attaching yarn to this area. All right, and then you're going to yarn over insert your hook into the stitch yarn over and pull through and we're going to do that one more time yarn over insert your hook into the or under the stitch yarn over and pull through when you do that you're going to end up having five loops on your hook that's and i'm it's a little hard to see because the um yarn doesn't have good stitch definition but i'm going to pull them apart here one two, three, four, and five. So now that you have five loops on your hook, you're gonna yarn over, go through all five of the loops, and then chain to kind of close up the pup stitch. After that, you're simply going to fasten off, have a bit of a yarn tail so that you can uh, weave in the ends here. And you're simply going to pull the yarn through back into the same stitch, like so. As you do that, you'll notice that you'll create um, this cute little knob for the arm. There we go. So repeat that on the other side so that you can get two little arms. And um, we're gonna go ahead and pull the yarn tail all the way in as well. So let me just get these tucked away and hidden. All right, there we go. And now um, we're going to go ahead and do the legs next. Hi everyone, so I found out that the video I just made for crocheting the little legs got deleted. So here I am, um, I'm gonna show it to you through um, an octopus since I did it for um, my dinosaur's two legs already. So let's pretend we are crocheting on the dinosaur here. What you'll do is first count down to round 11 you did the arms on round seven. So if you count down from seven, it's seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. So go and insert your hook under a stitch in round eleven where you want the leg to be. So I'm going to pretend this is where I want the leg to be. All right. And what you'll do is now make a big puff stitch. 
by pulling your yarn through. And we're going to um, repeat this part three times. So start with yarn over, insert your hook under that same stitch, yarn over, and pull through. This gives you three loops on the hook. Let's do that again for the second repetition. Yarn over, go under that stitch, yarn over, pull through. Now there are five loops on the hook. Let's do it one more time for the third repetition. Yarn over, insert your hook under the stitch, yarn over, and pull through. And that should give you seven loops on your hook. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. I know that was really hard to see because they're so bunched up and velvet yarn kind of melds together. So um, it's hard to see here in the video and I apologize for that. At the end of all these loops, um, you're simply going to yarn over once more and then pull through all seven of those loops, like so. Then you're gonna yarn over and pull through for a chain making a chain at the very top of that puff stitch. And you're gonna snip the yarn tail. Make sure you have a long enough tail to weave in. And you're gonna pull the yarn end through um, your project, the same way you did for the arm. The only difference is that you did a small puff stitch for the arm, which, does, which has two repetitions of the yarning over and inserting your hook and pulling through. And the legs have um, just one more repetition of that. So it's pretty much the same thing, but I just wanted to show you what the big puff stitch looks like anyway. All right. And after you pull the, your yarn ends through, the legs should look something like this. Now let's go ahead and crochet these spikes on your dinosaur. This part's optional, but I think it's a fun detail to add to your dino. And um, you can use a contrast color if you want, or you can use the same color. Now I'm using a darker purple here. And what you're gonna do first is find the center of the head, um, the very top center of the head. You're gonna insert your hook under that stitch. And this is where we'll begin our first um, puff. So let me just double check here. Hmm. I think I want my first puff to be a little closer up here to the center. All right. So for your puff, you're going to pull yarn through first. Like so. And now we're going to do the small puff on top. So yarn over, insert your hook under that same stitch, yarn over, pull through. That's three loops on your hook. We're gonna repeat one more time. Yarn over, insert your hook under the same stitch. Yarn over and pull through. That's five loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through all five loops. And then chain to secure that stitch or secure that puff stitch. Then you're gonna insert your hook under the next stitch so we're gonna go work down the back here. And I'm gonna yarn over and pull through for a slip stitch. Oops, I lost that there. So going under the next stitch, yarn over, pull through. There we go. So that makes the first little bump. You're gonna repeat this by doing a small puff stitch, a slip stitch, small puff stitch, slip stitch, all the way down the back. And as you go, you'll notice you'll create sort of a ridge. So here I'm gonna make another puff stitch. Yarn over, insert my hook into the next stitch. Oops, let me find where that is. Yarn over, pull through, do it again. Then you're gonna pull through all loops, chain, and then slip stitch in the next stitch. You'll want to look at your uh, dyno to make sure you're going down in um, the center of the back. And let me just pull it a little bit. All right, there we go. Let's keep going, working down the center here. All right, 
yarn over, insert your hook under the next stitch. Oops. Sorry, a little fiddly here. Yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, insert under. Yarn over, pull through. And go through all five loops. Chain, slip stitch into the next stitch. There we go. And I'm gonna keep working down. Double check um, how your dino's spines are looking, like um, how straight they are as you work along to make sure they're centered on the back. And remember to slip stitch in between each of these puff stitches. When you get to the very end, um, you will want to just finish up with a slip stitch at the end of the tail, and you're gonna you're gonna fasten off here and weave in your ends. So here, let me go ahead and pull through this last stitch. All right, after you finish the spikes, you are all done with your little dino. You can go ahead and just weave in the ends and enjoy your new cute amigurumi. As you can see, it is a very quick project. You're gonna love making this little guy in all sorts of colors. And you can even use, um, instead of super bulky weight yarn like I did, you can use medium weight yarn and a smaller hook and create a tiny baby. <laughs> This little one was made using um, medium weight yarn and a 2.75 millimeter hook. So its um, size is quite petite and he actually would be great as a keychain. All right, so thanks so much for watching my tutorial. Hope you enjoy making him. Um, remember to tag me on Instagram at sweetsofties, hashtag sweetsofties, and um, I will show your project some love. All right, take care now. Bye.